So in this video we're going to look at the hatchet tool integration. Now a couple of months ago William Vaughan very kindly offered us his hatchet tool collection to integrate into Modo. And if you don't know what that is, it's a collection of about a hundred uh, Python scripts that he sells on his website and the scripts that he's, he's created that help him in his day-to-day -day workflow. Now what I didn't want, didn't want to do was to kind of take all of these hundred scripts and just kind of lump them into Modo. Um, I wanted to be very kind of selective about these tools and I kind of used three, three criteria. The first one being they needed to be a kind of useful tool in a general, uh, in a general sense. Secondly, they, they needed to have workflows that were in line with standard Modo workflows. They couldn't have you know, workflows that were very, very unique to, them, um, to the individual script. And so that thirdly, they needed to be um, robust enough so they you know, stood up to a wide variety of testing. So what I'll do next is just take you through um, the tools that were selected and where I've placed them in the UI. So the first set of tools are under the Mesh Edit tab. And there's three of them, Fix Black Dots, Edge Zip, and Diagonal Redirect. And these are really useful um, kind of topology editing tools. So Fix Black Dots fixes that problem where you, if you spin an edge, you'll get that uh, uh, point uh, in the, kind of floating around on an edge. Uh, now, what you'd have to do normally is kind of select it, hit backspace to remove it. But now you can just hit Fix Black Dots, and it'll remove it um, automatically. So we've got another one there actually creates that quad again which is pretty nice. Um, edge zip. What that does is it takes an edge, an edge an edge that you select and then it takes the edges uh, running parallel to it and kind of welds them all together but it leaves nice quads at the ends. So you'll see what I mean when I run it. So slightly that edge and an edge zip and you can see how we get that nice quad there so we can Usually, kind of create geometry like that. And finally, uh, we have a diagonal redirect, which is really useful for kind of changing the flow of the topology. Uh, so, what you have to do is select two polygons which share a vert. And if you run diagonal redirect, you can see how it kind of changes the flow there. So, the next tool you'll find under the vertex tab, and it's called Vert Tear. So say so you wanted to uh, take one of these polygons and tear one of the edges away to create a hole. What you need to do is uh, select a polygon and then in vert mode you need to select uh, the vert vertices um, that are on that polygon that you want to tear away. Uh, so then run vert tear. You can, see you can then pull that out to create that hole and then you can carry on modeling. So the next set of tools can be found under the Polygon tab. Uh, the first one is Polyscale Offset. Uh, I think this is really useful for when you're, mod when you're modeling plans. So here I've kind of drawn out some walls of a very strange building using the pen tool in wall mode. And that's, I know that I created that with a width of 20 millimeters. Uh, but if I wanted to scale that down now, um, I couldn't just scale it because it's going to scale the whole thing. I'd probably have to try and use, you know, select these edges and use look like a, like, a, like a local action center or something. Um, whether that would work or not, I don't know. Uh, but what you can do with this is just, if I just select it on polyscale offset and I can say, okay, I want this to now be 10 millimeters and it will scale it on a per poly basis. So I hit okay. Just it scales it along its whole length, which is really, really useful. Now there's another kind of flavor of this tool. So say if I had a polygon that's sitting inside there and I wanted to create a gap between that polygon and this these, these polygons on the outside, um, I can just select that polygon and run poly, poly scale offset detach and tell it okay that I now want a 10 millimeter gap between that central polygon and the other ones. Okay, and it'll actually split them. So the next one is flatten end guns, and that does exactly what it says it does. So on this model, for some reason, she's got 
um, ingons in her ears because she hasn't been finished <laughs> um, and they're not flat now it's useful to have flat polygons because uh, flat ingons because uh, non-planar ingons can cause problems when you're beveling um, so what you can do here is just hit flatten ingons and it will flatten them off for you so the next tool is flip it which is really useful for quickly flipping things around now the only uh, caveat with it is you do have to select the polygons first so I select my shoe and run flip it then you can choose the axis on which you want to flip it so just, uh, in this case it'll be x so now I've created the uh, right shoe um, there's also another option which is flip it origin which will um, flip it across the origin so again I'll use the x-axis and we've got the right shoe again so the last one on this bunch is triple fan and this is an alternate alternate method for uh, triangulating polygons so this big end on top of the cylinder um, the normal triangulation tool gives you uh, that kind of polygon layout which might not always be ideal so what triple fan does is it, 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 it triples everything from a single point so I select the polygon I want to triple and in vert mode I select the vert uh, that I want to triple from then run triple fan and it splits it up that way so the next set of tools can be found, found under the curve tools uh, we've got open curve offset closed curve offset and some curve conversion tools so I've got this spline curve here if I run open curve offset this will create another curve running parallel to it uh, by a defined distance so hit OK you can see there well, and we've got another version of it which is offset trio which creates one on either side of it and that might be useful for you know, procedure, some procedural modeling work um, we also have a closed version of the tool we have a curve here so oh, select it first two millimeters yeah that creates one and that creates two I have, I have found using the open curve offset that if you uh, put a value in which is quite big relative to the curve you can get errors but I'll, I'll let you test that um, the other curve tools are, uh, are simply conversion tools so if you have a, uh, a spline curve and you want to convert it to a v-spline you can do that you can convert it to a bezier and vice versa so in this case I want to convert this spline curve to bezier Tron, just run that it doesn't delete the original it just creates a new one so now if I select that you can see we have a, a bezier curve so the rest of the tools can be found under the vertex map menu so we've got morph slicer you need to wait and weight map slicer um, so if I select a weight map see we've got a weight map across um, both sides of the object I have it selected and run weight map slicer it will create a left left and right version of that weight map so it leaves the original um, and I've got left and right and in a similar vein I have a morph map here and if I run morph map sorry morph slicer it does exactly the same thing so we get the original and we get a left and a right so the UV to weight tool is a very quick way of converting um, a UV map um, UV map data into weight data so if you have a UV map uh, selected and then run UV to weight you can choose um, to use either U or V and there you have a spring which you can easily um, scale now with a vertex map folder and the final tool is probably my favorite uh, mainly because I wanted this for so long in order um, it's the ability to easily scale a backdrop item so here I've got a plan and with the backdrop item selected you've now got two buttons at the bottom backdrop size and backdrop size keep aspect um, so backdrop size allows you to define both both the uh, the width and the height so if I say the width is uh, 300 millimeters uh, the height is 500 millimeters it will scale it accordingly um, and 
backdrop size keep aspect will allow you just allow you to just put, define the height and it'll scale the whole thing proportionally. So I know this is 392 millimeters. Okay, and it'll scale it. And if I add dimensions to it, you can see it's it is accurate. So one additional tool that William gave us is a selection tool for inverting uh, connected geometry. So in this scene I've got two spheres and a single mesh layer. If I make a selection and we, I hit the open bracket, that's Modo's default tool for invert, inverting the selection, but it inverts all the geometry in, this, in the, that particular uh, mesh layer. Now if you make a selection and hit shift open bracket, it'll just invert um, all connected geometry. Thank you.